The full cache mode will be used for this view, as we can see in the Views Options tab. Once the view has full cache enabled, if we execute the view, we can see that no records are retrieved. This is because we have not loaded the data in the cache. Now we will see how to load contents in the cache view. For that, we will open the vehicle shell and then execute the query as shown in the video. This query contains the context clause parameter cache preload, which is used for loading the records into the cache table. On execution of this query, we can observe that the data is coming from the source, and the new data is stored in the cache due to the use of the parameter cache preload. Now that we have loaded the records into the cache database, which is a relational database, let's notice how a query with aggregation behaves. You can refer to the query with aggregate functions in the video. On execution of this query, we can see that all the results are coming from the cache view. As the full cache mode allows delegation to the source, pushing down operations like group buys, unions, joins, etc. Also note that no new data is stored in the cache, as we are not using the cache preload context clause parameter. Next, consider a use case where you would like to invalidate a particular row of a cache, say based on a specific condition. This can be achieved by using the cache invalidate parameter. That is, the row satisfying a particular condition will be invalidated from the cache. We will check the syntax for invalidating the cache using the video. We will now execute the query for retrieving data for the mailing country China and see if the rows having China have been invalidated. We have a list of context clause parameters which will help us manipulate the cache views. We will now see an example query that includes the cache invalidate and cache preload parameters. Here we have set the cache invalidation for the set of rows matching the specified condition, and then we are loading the cache again for that specific set of rows. In other words, only the records matching the specific condition are refreshed from the source by expiring existing rows. You can check the syntax of the query in the video. We can see that this query invalidates the contents of all records, where the first name is Tammy, and then preloads the data into the cache. Now we will check if the data has been loaded again into the cache. To see that, we will execute the view without any conditions, as shown in the video. If we run the query, we will get all data from the cache, with updated values for Tammy Ruiz. You could also find an entry where the mailing country is China, and where the name of the person is Tammy Ruiz. This means that only the rows having Tammy Ruiz remain valid by the query. However, there will be no data for other people having their mailing country as China, which are still invalidated from the query. Now we will review another query. This query is one that preloads the cache for the view, invalidates all previously cached data, and waits for the load to complete before notifying the client. It does not return any actual query results and marks the new data as valid, all in one single transaction.
For our next query, it does not have much to output, but has a very specific configuration which helps with large data sets. This will execute a truncate table due to cache invalidates equal to all rows, which will remove all rows in the cache and directly insert the new rows as valid in the cache database. This does not wait for the cache load to be completed, so the execution trace will not contain details of the cache load. The results of the query are not returned to the client, and the cache is loaded in multiple blocks of 20,000 rows at a time. Finally, in this query, we can load the data from the source, but it's important to note that this query is missing the cache invalidate context option. Since we have not invalidated any results but loaded the results from the data source, duplicate rows can be created in the cache database. This is most likely not the behavior you want, so it's important to invalidate data in all cache loads other than the first one. This query waits for the cache load to be completed, and the details of the cache load will be part of the execution trace. The results of the query are not returned to the client, and if any error happens, the cache will still be loaded.